morning, everyone. Welcome to the November 2nd, 2016 uh, meeting of the Scarborough Town Council. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And if I could, I'd like to ask you to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. <coughs> Councilor Baybine? Present. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Caterina? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Chiazzo? Here. Chairman Donovan? Here. And uh, Peter Hayes has a, a business uh, commitment out of town, so uh, won't be able to be with us tonight. Uh, general public comments, anyone wishing to address an item not on the agenda can approach the podium. And it does change things, doesn't it? Thank you. Uh, minutes of October 19, 2016, regular meeting. Accept the motion. Move approval. Second. Uh, any comments or corrections? No. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Adjustments to the agenda, I know of none, and the items to be signed are the Treasurer's Warrants, which I will do later in the evening. Resolution 16-008, act on the request to approve resolution 16-008, <coughs> recognizing Saturday. November 26, <clears throat> 2016, as Small Business Saturday. Now, sometimes these come before us and they seem a little bit hokey. Uh, people probably don't want to know that I was born on Teriyaki Chicken Tuesday. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> that gets recorded in the minute. <laughs> but that, that, that gives you the idea of how some of these are done. But this one is important. This is, a re this is a resolution. And I'd like to start down at the end by having us each read a whereas clause. And if, Sean, you'd start at your end. If I get the biggest one, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> wow. I'm a little verbose, anyways. Um, resolution 16-008, recognizing November 26, 2016, as Small Business Saturday. Whereas the government of Scarborough, Maine celebrates our local small businesses and the contributions they make to our local economy and community. According to the United States Small Business Administration, there are currently 28.8 million small businesses in the United States. They represent 99.7% of all businesses with employees in the United States and are responsible for 63% of <coughs> net new jobs created over the last, excuse me, past 20 years and Whereas, small businesses employ over 49% of all businesses with employees in the United States, and? Whereas, 89% of consumers in the United States agree that small businesses contribute positively to the local community by supplying jobs and generating tax revenue, and? Whereas, 87% of consumers in the United States agree that small businesses are critical to the overall economic health of the United States. I wasn't sure if Tom was going to read, but whereas 93% of consumers in the United States agree that it is important for people to support the small businesses that they value in their community and whereas Scarborough, Maine supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our neighborhoods and whereas advocacy groups as well as public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Scarborough Town Council proclaims November 26, 2016, Small Business Saturday in Scarborough, Maine, and urges the residents of our community and communities across the country to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Public comment on the resolution. None. Uh, discussion. Kate. I would like to also say it's my 40th birthday that day. So <laughs> if anybody wants to add that to the resolution. Would that be tuna Saturday? <laughs> 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 How like 41 Woodfield Drive. <laughs> As a member of uh, Phi Local Scarborough and also an owner of five small businesses, and by small businesses I mean really small businesses because the SBA, the Small Business Association, actually uh, – says that small businesses or any, any entity that um, employs 500 employees or less, which means that most of the state of Maine, to be honest with you, is small business, um, I'm glad to see uh, us pass this because uh, um, I know 
from my own experiences here in town and in other towns, uh, there are a lot of people who are working from home and working on small businesses more than you would know. So thank you for thank doing you. this. Any other comments? I mean, I think we all uh, join in this one that uh, uh, supporting the local community uh, is what helps. It's just part of what makes the fabric of the community tight. And so when you have the opportunity this uh, season, this is a holiday season coming up, use that opportunity to go say hello to someone you see at the Ace Counter or one of these uh, stores in town and just uh, appreciate that uh, this helps out our local town. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Unanimous. Old Business, Order 1668, second reading to approve the charge for the Ad Hoc Public Safety Complex Building Committee and authorize the town manager to expend monies from the Public Safety Building Capital Improvement Account in an amount not to exceed $50,000. Look to the town manager to introduce this one. Yes, uh, council considered this in first reading at your last meeting. Uh, since then, we had a, a number of uh, town residents express interest in serving, and I'm pleased to uh, report that we we're able to accommodate all of them. We we're able to do so by suggesting a slight revision to the size and composition of the committee. And what's before you this evening um, is a draft that reflects, uh, you'll note, the red text is what was amended in first reading and blue text would be, be appropriate to offer that as an amendment this evening. <coughs> and essentially uh, it, it, uh, it raises the committee structure to a total of 13 members, uh, inserts specific names uh, to appoint the committee. And I would note on paragraph nine on the last page, it was a bit aggressive. I originally talked about we meeting weekly. I think that might be a bit uh, too much to ask of the committee, and I suggest bi-weekly would be a, a reasonable standard to strike. Thank you. Uh, just for the public, uh, so that you will know, the, Tom has covered the uh, substantive changes, uh, but I wanted to read the list of names of the people who will be members of the committee. Uh, uh, Chief Thurlow and Moulton, uh, Councilors St. Clair and Hayes, uh, Bruce Bell, these are people from who are residents at large, Bruce Bell, Susan Hamill, Judy Roy, Kevin Freeman, Roger <coughs> Shabbat, Greg Hanscom, Rick Meinking, Dave Libby. The construction expert is Rocky Rizvera. Uh, comments from the public. Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. I read that uh, online this afternoon before coming in. I believe it says in there that there is $600,000 for this project. That's to tell you, I think that's wonderful. I have long advocated that people set money aside for a big expense in the future, and to have 600 grand available for this project is just beautiful. I wish we would have done the same thing with the fire trucks uh, or truck. Skowhegan did it, and we didn't, but that's a different point. I'm just here to tell you that I think it's wonderful that you did this and had the money set aside. Thank you. Other comments from the public? See none, we'll close the public. Uh, and uh, I will ask for a motion to amend. So oh, well, let's start with the motion to put the motion, the matter on the table. So moved. Yes. So moved. Second. Uh, second, thank you. Motion to amend. So moved. Second. Uh, dis uh, discussion, uh, public comment on the motion to amend. No. No, no I guess not, probably. <laughs> uh, uh, discussion on the motion to amend. You, you've been all confused since that uh, teriyaki Tuesday yeah, comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> right in my pocket. I just, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Is, is that okay, Chair? Yes, go right ahead. Um, the motion to amend is to change it to biweekly meetings. Is that correct? And is that blue. the the motion? Everything in blue. And, uh, everything in blue. I'm sorry, I wasn't sure if we were including everything. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. Other comments, Sean. So, um, 
I do apologize because I was absent last meeting for a business meeting, but um, can you refresh my memory? Because the size of this project is going to be pretty substantial. Is this enough uh, input in comparison to, let's say, the school project that uh, occurred? I don't believe it's going to be. Um, it's going to be probably less than a third the size, let alone the cost of what that was. But I just want to make sure this is representative of getting enough input. And, and by the way, I, I, the names that have already come forward are awesome. I mean, you get a former town councilor, Kevin Freeman, is an, I consider a, a construction expert um, on the planning side. So um, I just want to make sure the size is adequate. And if, there, if we can, give the power to the committee to add additional members if necessary. Interesting point. Jim Marie. Um, through the chair to Mr. Rayburn, if you look yes. on the paragraph of membership at the end, it says although official membership is limited to 13, we're going to 13. It says committee is encouraged to draw upon other resources and invite other key stakeholders to participate in proceedings as they feel appropriate. I think that that would cover that because right. um, they can always come back to the council if they want to. And I think that's probably the point, that they, yeah. uh, if this language was insufficient, mm -hmm. they could come back to us. Because right. uh, right. I agree that okay. the size of the task could be substantial. Thank you. Kate. Um, and I think two, two points to that. I think one, the reason, one of the good reasons that there are two counselors on that is that no matter what, there's always going to be a counselor at a meeting. Mm -hmm. So if there are procedural problems that arise, there's a counselor there that will be able to advise them if there are any issues. And I think, to Councillor Babine's point, the reason that we decided to keep this first group small is that this is just initial, this is the initial part of the project. So I'm guessing, I mean, I, this is, you know, these projects take quite a bit of time. This is year one. I'm assuming by the time we get into year two that this group is probably going to grow like the Wentworth group did. The Wentworth group started as small when they very first started and took off. So that's what I would assume. It was my opinion at the time when we first started talking about this that the things that we are going to be discussing, sometimes if you have too many people to start off in the beginning, it can be a little overwhelming for those that are involved. Um, and so I'm actually happy with the size of this. Um, and I also agree with, agree with Councillor Babine that the group that was assembled by the manager and the chair, um, and I know that um, both chiefs had input into that, are phenomenal. Um, and I also think it was great that they decided to expand it and not leave anybody out. I mean, you never want to turn away volunteers. So thank you. Chris. Uh, I, I'll, I'll echo Councillor St. Clair's comments. Um, I, I, I appreciate uh, the work we did going from three at large to, to eight at large. Um, I think that shows a couple of things. One, our willingness to open that up to a bunch of different perspectives. Looking for the names on this list, uh, there's a lot of well-known well quantities there. Um, Rick Meinking from the Energy Committee. Uh, I think will be a great asset as well. Um, but I certainly do appreciate the expansion. I think um, it's important to keep in mind that these guys are just going to be advising us. They're not making any final decisions. They're just going to bring their recommendations to the council. So I think it's a great start. Um, I think it's a good makeup, and I and, uh, look forward to helping and assisting in any way we can. Jean Marie? Um, I would also point out uh, under time frame that the council has until August 2000, excuse me, the committee has until August 2017 to come up with a report at which time they shall cease to exist unless the council decides to keep them going. So it, to me that's really good because it, it, if you don't put some sort of a deadline or a time frame on it, people tend to just go on and on and on. So I like seeing this. Uh, I think it will help the group stay really focused. So I just want to point that out to folks who don't have this in front of them. Other comments? Seeing none, we're going to vote on the motion to amend. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, motion as amended is now on the floor. Uh, further discussion? Kate? Um, I'd just like to say, you know, as one of the counselors that was appointed to it, thank you for that. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be great. Um, you know, some of this is my background, so that's kind of exciting. And I would just like to say that I know after speaking with Councillor Hayes, um, we're going to just take off running. So um, it's going to be an exciting project, and I hope that we can get, you know, everybody from the town behind it. So thank you. And it's, it's um, huge and very important to have the council support. So thank you for that. And thank you to the two councillors who offered. This is a, it's a quite a task. Will. I'd like to extend that uh, to thank all the volunteers that have come forward. I think this is a this is a big task. 
and I really appreciate all the citizens that step forward and, and um, volunteered their time. It's a big time commitment. And thank you, Kate, for volunteering. And Peter, wherever you are. Further comments? <laughs> Say none. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, new business. Uh, act on the request. Uh, no, uh, we have one more old business. Order number 16-69. Act on the request to approve the names that were posted by the Appointments Committee at the Town Council meeting of October 19, 2016. And I'll look to the Appointments Committee chair to... Do you want me to reread them again? Or? Yes, if you Okay. Will. So, Planning Board, we're going to move first alternate Roger Bealey to a full voting member with a term to expire in 2017. Move the second alternate, Robin Saunders, to a full voting member with a term to expire in 2018. We're going to appoint Rachel Hendrickson as a first alternate with a term to expire in 2019 and appoint Richard Dupre as the second alternate with a term to expire in 2017. These changes will take effect on November 8, 2016. And then we had another one for Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee. We're going to move first alternate Erica Downs to a full voting member with a term to expire in 2019 and move the second alternate Maura Erickson to the first alternate with a term to expire in 2019. Good. Uh, accept the motion. So moved. Second. Public comment on the appointments committee nominees. Discussion. Chris. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody. These are all volunteer positions. Um, we're, we're, we seem to be very blessed lately in appointments with a, a plethora of people volunteering. It's better than the alternative. So, uh, and very qualified people as well. So um, it's, I think it's a, it's a testament not only to the uh, nature and the uh, expertise of some town residents, but also their willingness to engage uh, in, in civil service uh, without any uh, cost to the community other than their time. Mm -hmm. Kate. I just want to say also too to point out that we have changed things up a little bit and we did speak with the chairs of these committees and that's our plan going forward in the future is to make sure that we're communicating openly with the chairs so that um, you know they're the ones that are in the thick of it you know it's very easy for us to sit behind the desk and appoint people to these positions but they're the ones that have to work with these people so and it's also important to remember too that anyone who's newly elected to these boards have a one-year um, probation period, which is something that we did not do in the past. Um, and so that gives us a little bit of a cushion just in case people aren't, don't realize exactly what they're getting themselves into. So, um, but obviously just like um, Councillor Chiazzo said, thank you to everybody that comes forward. We'll, we're always looking for people. So thank you. Yeah, and the one year period is to allow people to uh, gracefully back away from a commitment that mm -hmm. turns out to be substantially greater than yeah. they might have realized at the beginning. Other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you, that's unanimous. Uh, new Business Order 1670, uh, act on the request to appoint Larissa Crockett, Assistant Town Manager, to the Maine Municipal Association's Legislative Policy Committee to fill the unexpired term of Chairman Dunneman, whose term expires in June of 2018. And I'll look to the town manager. Yes, um, Larissa Crockett, the new assistant town manager, has long been involved with the Legislative Policy Committee in her former uh, life uh, with the town of Acton. Uh, so she's very familiar with the process, with the players, and I think she'll be a tremendous advocate for us. And Councilor Chairman Donovan was uh, kind enough to step aside and allow her to assume that position. I think she'll represent us well on the Augusta. Uh, motion. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, public comment on this matter. None. Discussion. Dean Marie. Uh, having been the former Legislative Policy Committee person, um, I'm thrilled that Larissa is going to continue on legislative policy uh, in Augusta along with um, Councilor Baybine, who was uh, our elected delegate there. Um, the more we have up, up um, working with Maine Municipal to work and look at bills that are of interest and are important to municipalities, the better. So. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, I, having had limited involvement with the uh, policy committee, I really came to the conclusion that this is an organization that benefits uh, Scarborough as well as all the other municipalities and it's got staff 
uh, professional people who are looking for issues that are important to municipalities. And I think it's a way, if we use it effectively, to draw ourselves closer to our own legislative delegation, which I think ought to be, uh, may not be the number one goal or two or three, but it's certainly something that we should aspire to, to have a closer relationship there. Working people, they have a busy schedule once the season starts, which is usually December. Uh, and so it is tough to keep in touch, but uh, I think if we work uh, and get a little bit more insight into what the MMA is doing in their policy committee, uh, uh, and I think Larissa is perfect for that role because she's a staff person. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, she's a part of the administrative uh, arm of uh, uh, Scarborough Town Government. So I think we have a, a unique opportunity here to uh, allow it to help us to a much greater degree. Uh, she'd probably be angry, but perhaps not. She's also a self-professed uh, policy wonk, so that she really, really <laughs> likes this stuff, which, which makes it a little more palatable. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Order 1671, act on the request to adopt a new fund balance policy, and I'll look to the chair of the uh, finance committee. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, to, the, um, to the credit of the entire Finance Committee, we've actually been looking at this for a little bit over two years, uh, trying to determine when it was an appropriate time to address um, the fiscal um, uh, state of our current uh, fund balances, in particular unrestricted funds. Um, and what we were able to accomplish over the past, um, the past year is really to take a look at our existing policy, um, provide uh, clarification to definitions that are uh, more consistent with today's definitions for um, the types of funds that are um, applicable for a community like Scarborough. Um, so the policy is in really in a restatement form. So there is no blue and red kind of markups because this is replacing the entire policy from before. Um, it also provides a more um, greater clarification around the format in which we will report out those balances. Therefore, it is um, standard across all departments um, as well as all uh, functions within the town. Um, then more importantly, um, the, um, the boundaries have been redefined. And what I mean by the boundaries is really those policy limitations. The current policy um, states, and I'm, I'm going to be uh, kind of generic in explaining this, sets the minimum limit that we will never fall below 5% of our uh, net operating budget, Gr gross operating budget. Right, Tom? Gross. Gross. Gross operating budget. However, our goal is to be at 8.33%, which is equivalent to 1 12th of our operating budget, which is a GASB or an accounting standard that we are required. <coughs> and it also sets a high limitation of 10%, and it says that if we are ever to exceed 10%, then the excess amount will go towards capital projects um, or programs um, or expenditures, as well as any other uh, need of the town. And what we have found over time is that um, the fiscal health of our community is growing. Um, and it is stable and that we believe that it is now time to address those boundaries and increase them. And what this policy does to increase them is that we have set the minimum standard in order to really support our credit <laughs> position, meaning our agency rating, is that the minimum limit will be a change from 5% to 8.33. The um, goal is somewhere is around 10%, which is the former cap, and that we will not exceed 12%. And within this document, we also have expanded um, definitions of where that excess might go to based upon the council's direction as a whole. Um, before, it was a generic statement that simply said capital projects and capital uh, planning. Um, this actually now provides a more detailed list of five um, options because uh, they are all truly options with varying degrees of difficulty and discussion. Um, and they include um, that they can be retained in non-spendable and restricted accounts that offset unfunded liabilities and or retained in assigned accounts that may be used for future budget cycles as a property tax rate stabilization available for use during catastrophic events or funding future capital expenditures and projects. That's the continuation of what it was before. The retirement of debt, um, and from um, a planning perspective, that would be the more aged debt that can be retired because there are some debt that you uh, can't call on because they have been uh, bonded and, and promised. Um, and then, of course, there's always the opportunity for a taxpayer refund, and this is the first policy statement where we actually address that that is an option. That's probably one of the more difficult and more uh, philosophical conversations that would have to go 
uh, before the entire uh, council, but it is an option and a, a truly great, great year. Um, so we've detailed that. And then additionally, we've also added a reporting statement that says that the town manager will report to the finance committee annually um, a statement of all fund activity. Um, and by the way, and just so you know, I believe that's new in this policy, but the manager is always as part of the budget, um, as well as the annual report giving us a statement. Um, there is an attachment which I did want to ask as a friendly amendment if we can delete that. That was an example that the, the committee used on how it would look but should not be included because it does not represent, I think, the major categories for our town. So if we could delete that as a friendly amendment, page four, um, I would appreciate it. So that's my overview, unless Chris, if you'd like to add anything as another member. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I, Sean, very descriptive as always. Uh, the, the big take, two big takeaways for me were um, number one, you know, the use of fund balance. In the past, we've kept the reserve as an emergency fund in case there was some catastrophe or something like that. We'd have the reserve funds in place to be able to cover that operational expense. Um, more often than not, it, it kind of serves two purposes. Uh, it also acts as kind of a, a uh, reserve account where um, you know we, we try and absorb any major fluctuations from year to year over any specific account. So I, I think this, uh, after a lot of debate in the finance, um, I think the, the, the numbers are, are, are appropriate. Um, you're always leery to um, keep too much of the taxpayer's money in reserve. Um, it's supposed to be for the town's benefit and working for the town, so I think this is a great compromise. Um, I also think expanding the usage of, of any surplus funds is critical. In the past, uh, we were very restricted by the previous policy of anything above had to be used towards capital, if I, if I understood the policy correctly. So this um, not only expands um, um, relatively reasonably the amount of reserves we can keep uh, on, on hand, it also broadens the, uh, our, our ability as a council to use those excess in, in ways that the council feels appropriate for that particular time, so it doesn't restrict us as well. Thank you for that introduction. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Uh, public comment on uh, the <coughs> resolution. Discussion. Well, I just had a question. Uh, the uh, appropriate uses above 12%, uh, the second one is uh, retained and assigned accounts. Isn't, isn't that an unrestricted fund balance? <coughs> and so wouldn't we be essentially just keeping in, just saying we're going to expand us over 12% as an option? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I asked you yes or no question. Do you have, yes or no answer. Uh, you have some place to be? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, but but everything everything else would essentially be be reducing the amount of funds that we're keeping inside of the uh, uh, unrestricted. Yes, That's my understanding. Yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> it's continuing. Um, I really appreciate the the effort here. I think it, it uh, contrasting this with the old one. I think this does a, a is much clearer, um, and uh, I think really from a, a layman's perspective, really helps me. Um, uh, understand what we're trying to do with this. So I appreciate the effort. John. Uh, two pieces. One is I, I really want to emphasize something that Council Chiasma uh, mentioned, and that is about there's always a concern about the level, not only if it's too low, but more importantly if it's too much and too high. So one of the issues that we've heard over time, and it's not just this year, but we did hear from the auditors this past year, and that is that what we're seeing in many communities and what is more desirable is that to even be higher than 12%. There's some communities that are already at 15. I believe Falmouth is almost at 20. Over 20. Over 20. So um, what it really comes down to, both from a, um, if you're too low and too high, is the planning piece. So <coughs> while I was short in answering yes, the secondary piece of that, which is more opinionated, is it's what are you planning to do with that money. So yes, mm -hmm. you can keep it in unrestricted funds for longer, therefore basically violating your own policy, but what is the purpose of doing that? And there needs to be a plan because the rating agencies look to that plan and not just the policy. So if you fall below 8.33%, um, and by the way, rating agencies generally state, um, regardless of, the, of accountants, um, that they want you to have no less than 5%. However, if you have a policy that states it higher, what they want to know is that if you fall below the policy line, what are you going to do mm -hmm. to get back into accordance with that, because they understand that there is contingencies and there's things that happen over time. Um, well, I feel that there's also encumbered responsibility that if we exceed 12% and we're going to keep it there, then we have to do better at planning on how to use that money. Um, so to me, it's uh, both ends of the 
of the candle there that we're kind of looking at. Um, the last piece that I wanted to mention was um, I really appreciate the work that the Finance Committee did on this, so I, I want to thank uh, Peter, who um, provided a lot of insight into this, as well as the town manager and Ruth, uh, finance director. I think this is a good move. I've said this over time. I've been around long enough that I remember that we were well uh, below 5% when I first got on this council, and for us to be in this position to really support the community's growth through this type of planning is um, it's, a, it's an extraordinary statement to everyone, including staff members who've built our community um, from the infrastructure up, as well as the citizens that have supported it. And we have to keep uh, this kind of fiscal and financial responsibility in the back of our head each time. So I really appreciate the work, and thank you. Good. Thank you. Other comments? I had, well, one more. I had one more. I'd just like to echo uh, uh, the accolades we got from Mr. Turk earlier about saving up for, for a, a purpose. And I think that it makes a lot of sense to uh, if we're able to save up for the money when we need it. Thank you. Uh, my my sense is I don't like to hold on to other people's money, uh, so I, I come at this uh, from a slightly different point of view. Uh, that uh, unless we have a really good purpose, uh, and we have insurance, so you think of catastrophes, and that's what people oftentimes reference for these kinds of funds. They're available here for emergencies. And that is extremely remote because of the comprehensive insurance coverage that we have. But on the other hand, there are some factors that are outside of our control, and we've seen them happen in budgets uh, in a number of years in, in recent times. And that is the state, <clears throat> just because of their own financial condition, finds it necessary to cut back <coughs> substantially on funding that we have received. And so there are those circumstances that will be outside our control. And yes, we do need to have plans to be able to get back into conformance. Uh, one of the golden rules that the uh, uh, rating agencies have is uh, abide by your own rules. That's very important to them. And if you ignore them, that will undermine your, uh, the rating agency. And we've done very well by the rating agencies. They're not my favorite. Uh, pals, if you ever saw the big short or read the book, uh, you, you'll, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But nevertheless, they're uh, something that, I won't call it an evil, but they exist. Uh, and they have a purpose. Uh, uh, and, we have to, and we have to recognize that all our bonds get rated. And so we need to make sure that those ratings uh, remain as they are at, the, at a very high level for a community of our size. So uh, for, the, for those reasons, I am going to uh, uh, support this, and I particularly appreciate the effort of the Finance Committee. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous, thank you. Uh, Non-action items, none. Standing special committee reports and liaison reports. Chris, let's start down with you. Um, well, uh, Energy Committee hasn't met. Uh, I was going to brief you on the uh, school teacher's um, contract, but town manager beat me to the punch, so I have nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Kate, okay. you good? Team Marie. Um, all I have to report is long range planning will be meeting this Friday morning at 8 o'clock to start the process of the uh, comprehensive <coughs> plan, you know, what we're going to do, how we're going to approach it. So. Very good. Thank you. Will? Yep. So, uh, Historic Preservation Implementation Committee met last night. Uh, one of the things that was being discussed was that there's a, uh, a boundary <coughs> marker that used to be over in the um, the uh, Michaels parking lot over between us oh, and yes. um, uh, South Portland uh, from the 1820s, and it, unfortunately, it's fallen over. Um, so, but right now, it's in possession of the um, uh, Public Works, so it's safely um, being stored uh, while we figure out what to do with it. John, so um, and uh, I hate to throw this at Tom, but. Um, I did have a finance uh, report to issue a copy of our fund balance, uh, sorry, our um, account. So this is actually, there is no expense report in here, Tom. Uh, I beg your pardon. So there's a page missing, so maybe we can get that at the next meeting. But um, here are the financial statements that the Finance Committee reviewed uh, for your purview, and uh, we'll make sure that you get the expense yes. page as well. Apologies. I 
And that's all I have. Thank you. Town Manager's report. Yes, a couple of quick matters. Um, several weeks back, we finally did hear from the Maine Law Court uh, regarding the so-called Prouts Next Tax Appeals. And for reasons that we still don't know, there was about a three-month separation between uh, the Law Court reporting on the two different uh, consolidated cases. Uh, as we expected, uh, the decision was kind of in lockstep with the, uh, with the former one, so there's really no substantive change. Um, what that does now is the remand is officially um, back to the local Board of Assessment Review, and we're now about the business of, uh, of, of hearing this. The remand uh, was, was very clear in some respects and very foggy in others. They really gave no proposed remedy, just said an abatement is appropriate, a reasonable abatement uh, is appropriate. Um, so there'll be a lot of conversation around the reasonable um, component of that directive. Uh, what we've decided to do is express a willingness to the other parties to enter into a mediation process. <coughs> and we think it's, uh, it's not required as part of the process, but we think it would be a worthwhile exercise for both parties to uh, really to perhaps get quicker to the end of this process. It's been long. It's been expensive. Uh, these are several hundred of our taxpayers. And so it just makes sense to, uh, with all the history that's, that's gone before it, uh, to put our heads together and see if there's a way to to kind of uh, get this done sooner than later. If that's not successful, the local board process will follow uh, its normal course. Uh, they'll hear the matter um, uh, on the remand from the law court and make a decision. That decision is still appealable back to the court. So we have motivation to um, be open and honest and, and hear both sides, all sides of the issue and see if we can find a way through this. Uh, should that be successful, certainly the council will be involved with approving any kind of settlement that might come out of that process. Uh, so right now we're just kind of uh, trading the idea of mediation. Uh, I'm hopeful that the, the other parties will be interested in, in meeting us at the table. So I'll keep you advised. Uh, we also found out last week that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has approved what's called the Great Thicket National Wildlife Refuge. And I don't, I must admit, uh, there's, there's more to this I don't understand than I do. Uh, but the service has approved it, which now gives the agency and its staff uh, some authorities to actually go about the business of acquiring, either by fee interest or easement, uh, a pretty large uh, chunk of land. Uh, just in Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough alone, the focus area that they've identified is some 3,200 acres, and it's around uh, the Rachel Carson Preserve and kind of from Spurwink road toward the ocean, but almost the entirety of uh, the shorefront. And there's, of those 3,200 acres or so, 800 of which are really the target area. So we need to know more about that. Mm -hmm. And I've been in communication with Senator Collins' office, who is asking a lot of these basic questions and has agreed to meet with, uh, with us in Cape Elizabeth so we better understand this. And when I do know more, mm -hmm. I'll share that with you. Uh, but it potentially could have big impact. Yeah. Uh, I could imagine that there will be conservation easements at the very least, and it will dictate what can and can't happen within that area. So it's something to pay attention to for sure. Uh, I wanted to lastly just report on uh, Pine Point Road. I believe it was at the last council meeting, a member of the public spoke at the podium regarding the bridge replacement. Mm -hmm. um, sidewalks were never planned as part of that, but what is planned, there are two 12-foot travel lanes, and there's six foot shoulders on both sides of the road. So there's no vertical separation by way of curb or a conventional sidewalk, but there's certain, certainly uh, a comfortable width to cross that, uh, that bridge section. Um, so that's the, the report on that. And then also, I just want to mention, uh, in the CIP budget this year, we did get funding to start some preliminary engineering in the Pine Point area. We're going to be doing some, I, we call it master planning, but it's really a, appreciating kind of the full build out. Uh, from a pedestrian point of view and, and traffic point of view, but also focusing intently on East Grand Avenue, which is in dire need of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, there's chronic uh, flooding issues and stormwater transport issues in that area, very, very low. Um, and if you've ever taken note, there's virtually no reveal left on the sidewalk. It's been paved so many times through the years uh, that the, the systems really need to be replaced. And as part of that, we'll have to look at the East Grand Pine Point mm -hmm. intersection, which is uh, a very interesting design, yeah. I'll say. <laughs> uh, but before we get too far down the road, and this is based on some experience uh, with, with neighborhoods, but Pine Point in particular, 
these folks are very interested in their neighborhood, and we've, uh, we're going to engage them in a neighborhood meeting on November 15th just to kind of introduce the issue and start to get some initial feedback. Uh, and we uh, are well aware that public participation and involvement will be a key part of this process as we go forward. Um, should we have any great revelations out of that meeting, I'm pleased to share those back with you, and I'll publicize that a bit more if anyone yeah. wishes to attend. Just to be, uh, I got an email from a resident about it. I'll forward okay. it to you. And then as a related piece, members of the uh, Ordinance Committee through the past couple of years, we, s we still have not finally decided on the parking situation right. on that lower section of Pine Point Road from the bridge down to East Grand. Uh, staff has been working and several different ordinance committees have provided input through the years. And I think uh, when the next ordinance committee is constituted, we'd like to bring that back and see if we can actually make some progress and uh, move <laughs> forward. And that timing is really important because there's money to repave that section of the road that we had them delay. So we could have some additional time locally to sort out uh, these sort of parking issues. So that's an issue that uh, the future council will see certainly early in the new year if we can move it along quick enough. So thank you. Thank you. Chris, did you have a question? I, I did through the chair if I could. Um, um, is there any plans, Tom, for um, striping or marking those six-foot lanes kind of like we did down at um, Eastern Trail Road to really kind of distinguish them as pedestrian bike friendly and not just kind of put a yellow stripe and say there's a gap? You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the typical paint uh, striping detail is for a thick, like six-foot white fog line, they call it. So mm -hmm. a solid line, it very clearly marks the edge of the travel lane. Um, I think we can look to different options to to uh, cross hatch or otherwise uh, put some different striping in that area. Maybe even some of the placards that show a, bi a bicycle right. symbol, right. Uh, yeah. something like that, just to give motorists and pedestrians a better sense of where they should be on the road. Yeah, I so think that would be helpful. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at that. Yeah. That's a Thank you. Fix. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Councilor comments. Let's sit, start down with Sean. Thank you. Uh, four things. First is um, for couple of years, including even going way back, I've asked and tried and I've always forgotten until I saw a picture uh, a couple of nights ago about having the council um, um, take an annual picture altogether. Back in the early 2000s when I was first elected, we would actually uh, stand around the chair um, and have a picture with the emblem and it was really a nice commemorative thing and I, I would like to see us actually do that before we uh, lose Jean Marie in particular, um, but it's also a nice parting gift um, uh, I think that, well, she is leaving, I mean, so anyways, so <laughs> I just think it would be very nice if we started that tradition, plus I think it would actually be a better picture than the ones that we get in the annual report that's just a, a mug shot. Um, so um, I was hoping that if it's okay with the chair, um, if next meeting, if everyone wore their suit and tie and their Sunday best, that we could have that picture, since it will be the last one with all the councilors sitting and that we maybe do that every year. Really? I think that's a better parting gift than a, a plaque that will never get yeah. hung up in your house. Um, next, I did want to mention, um, because there's been a lot of talk and I've gotten a lot of comments, um, about political signs, and particularly political signs that are on the Route 1 Marsh Corridor, as well as the Pine Point Marsh Corridor. I really hope that maybe a future council, and maybe not right now, but we do look at um, what, if we can, to try to control that better. Um, I've been very fortunate to run for, uh, run for office five times um, over the last uh, 17 years, and never once had to put a sign there to get elected. I don't think you need to, and it ruins something very beautiful. And when high tide, uh, sorry, when low tide um, happens, you see all of those signs that fall into the marsh that never get picked up. That I think is absolutely horrible. So maybe if there's something that we can do as a council going forward without restricting free speech, I think it would be very, very nice. Um, wanted to also mention, don't forget to vote. Um, there is no one to blame but yourself if you don't vote. So get out and vote. There's opportunities. I believe tomorrow is the last day, without ex uh, exceptional circumstances. Um, but it is next Tuesday, so I heard Tody and the staff have been extremely busy. So thank you, Tody. Um, Jean Marie, I'll save you for later. And I did want to say one thing, uh, two more things. Sorry. One is um, so Halloween. I hope everyone had a great Halloween. This is the first year I actually was driving home really quick to try to get the Halloweeners in, and I go by on there's a business on Route One that already has Christmas lights out. Okay. I get home and it's all Christmas shows on TV while we're handing out uh, candy. So I have to say it's 52 <laughs> days, three hours and 15 minutes before it's Christmas. And I did want to say happy 19th anniversary to my wife. This is uh, 14 Very of good. them I've oh. had to spend here with you. Congratulations. Cool. Nice. Well, 
so I, I wanted to uh, echo uh, Sean's um, plea for everyone to get out and vote. I also wanted to wish good luck to the to the candidates. Um, um, it's going to be over soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. One way or another. That's right. Yeah. Heaven help us all. Um, but I also mentioned last time that I'd gone trunk or treating, and I ran into uh, Chief Moulton there. Uh, and I hope you'll in indulge me because I took a picture with, uh, or with my daughters with, with Chief Moulton, and it came out really nicely. So I sent it to him, and he responded with a couple of really nice handwritten notes um, and some coloring books, and I really appreciate it. And I really wanted to read uh, the note one of the notes just because I really think it speaks to uh, our chief of police character and I, I really, really appreciate it. And it says, Dear Emerson, it was very nice to meet you on Saturday. I liked your Batwoman costume. <laughs> this world needs more strong and brave women who will help others that need it. Great job and thank you for having your picture taken with me, Chief Moulton. Right. Thank you. Chief Marie. Um, I will just <clears throat> say absolutely everyone get out and vote. Every vote counts. I know people think it doesn't, but they do. We end up with a lot of recounts in the state. Um, so if you think your vote doesn't count, think again. It, it does. <coughs> uh, you can, it's been mentioned, you can vote tomorrow. It's the last day to do the, it's technically called absentee. And every other state they call it early, but the, I'm not going to go into the differences in, into that. Uh, without exceptional circumstances, <coughs> Tuesday the polls are open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. and it's at the high school. Um, so please, you know, come. It's it's uh, we have a lot of volunteers there, and I'm hoping we're having some sort of a table there. I didn't hear back, uh, other than I know Sean can't be there because he's <coughs> got work. And we'll mention, but we'll we'll take care of that afterwards. And then I just want to take a minute, just uh, basically, um, my husband, Jeff McLean, uh, has been on the fire department for 25 years, and he just retired as of Halloween oh, today. Yes. Um, his grandfather, Albert Libby, was one of the founders of Engine 5, North Scarborough, and Jeff stepped in, uh, I don't know if the chief remembers this story, but... Um, he started one week before I was due with my daughter, Katarina, and his first duty was supposedly to work Hurricane Gloria. And my mother called him up and said, you're not leaving my daughter alone nine months pregnant. <laughs> so he wasn't able to go work at the fire department that day, but that's okay. Uh, but he did serve as a lieutenant and a captain, and uh, I want to thank the fire department very much for putting up with my husband all those years. <laughs> Um, and I know he felt, oh my God, I've just been, he's been debating on, oh, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, but, um, so, happy retirement, Jeff. <laughs> it's Thank not you. like he doesn't have anything to do. Yeah, he's got nothing else to do, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, I did ask uh, uh, Councilor St. Clair to assume responsibility for the table awesome. at the vote, and she has offered to take on that responsibility for us. Yay. Yay! Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Councilor comments, Kate. Um, so a lot of times we talk, uh, or Jessica, Councilor Holbrook used to do talk about um, when we had deaths in Scarborough, um, and this is one that you know we d we haven't had a chance to talk about, and I, w I wasn't going to bring it up because um, it's you know it was kind of a while ago, and we did we missed some meetings and things like that, um, um, but. I think Scarborough as a community and, and the police department and, and Project Hope, you know, sustained a loss with the loss of Devin Higgins mm -hmm. um, and due recently to some, some nastiness, um, it's sort of reopened a, a really hard scar. Um, Jamie um, Devin's sister is one of my best friends. Um, Devin was a friend of mine. Um, and. Uh, I can't say enough good things about him, and um, I don't. It, it, he, did he die of a drug overdose? He did. Um, it doesn't define him, and it didn't define him. Um, drugs don't define people, and it's and it shows that this this guy worked so hard um, for so long to try to beat this, um, and it just for some reason that just took that one time and people need to understand that it just takes that one time and that's why our police department is working so tirelessly to help these people um, and for them 
um, to catch flack for that um, or to be berated for that or to, um, you know, for people to talk poorly of Devin um, is just, in my opinion, disgusting. Um, and uh, I have no tolerance for that and I won't tolerate it. Um, and I just felt it was important to say tonight that um, I think that Devin was very brave. I think what he tried to accomplish was very brave. He put himself back out there. He, he went and met with addicts and admitted his mistakes and admitted his problems and made amends with his own family. And that takes more strength than a lot of people will ever even realize. Um, it's not easy to admit when you make a mistake. And so um, I have a lot of respect for their family and I'm, my heart literally hurts for the Higgins family. And I think it's really important and I hope as a council we realize that Jamie has worked incredibly hard on Operation Hope. Um, and due to the fact that um, there has been some things said this week, you know, has really questioned her role in Operation Hope. Um, and I don't think it's something that she should give up. I think it's something that, that we should stand behind her and support. And as a community, we should support the police department and her going forward. Um, and I hope that, you know, if anyone's ever approached or asked, that that's the response that is given. Um, she, she did not save Devin. That wasn't her. That, that had nothing to do with Jamie. So I just want to make that clear. Um, Jamie was an incredible sister to Devin, um, and she's an incredible worker, and she's amazing at what she does, and she's phenomenal at Operation Hope. And so I just, I know this is more of a little bit more of a personal side than a council issue, but I felt it was necessary to say something tonight um, just because of this past week. So thank you for allowing me that time. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. Um, well, I'll, I'll try and end on a, on, on a lighter note, not to, not to make light of any of that. I, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, uh, any, that's a very personal and tragic loss, and the fact that she turned that into something that benefits the community with the scholarship, I think, is just amazing. It speaks to her character and the impact that he had. So I, I definitely would support that 100%, without a doubt. Um, I was uh, lucky enough to attend the... Um, Gold Award celebration at the Maine Veterans Home um, last week. Um, and I just want to take a little bit of time to give you some background. This is actually a really big deal. Um, I didn't realize the extent of the, uh, the caliber of this award, but if you'll indulge me for a quick second, I'll just, I'll just read some, some facts that I, that I gathered before, uh, before tonight. Uh, the American Healthcare Association, which is who provides this award, is a nonprofit federation uh, of affiliate state health organizations together representing more than 11,000 nonprofit and for profit nursing facilities, assisted living, developmentally disabled, and uh, subacute care providers that care for uh, approximately 1 million elderly and disabled individuals each day. Um, the, uh, this uh, quality award provides a pathway for providers of long-term and post-acute care services to journey towards performance excellence. The program is based on core values and criteria of the Baldridge Performance Excellence Program. Um, and basically there are three levels, bronze, silver, and gold. Uh, they are progressive, so you have to qualify for bronze first. Once you qualify for bronze, you can apply for silver. Once you get silver, you can apply for gold. Um, just to give you, a, and it's a very formal and thorough review process to, to be qualified for this. Um, of the 11,000 members, uh, three gold awards were given this year nationally. Scarborough was one of them. This was the first facility in the state of Maine to receive a gold award. Um, so it's very, very prestigious. Um, this, uh, and it's not just the Scarborough facility, uh, the Maine Veterans Homes, uh, all of the other there are six facilities statewide. Scarborough has the only gold. Uh, the, the, the remaining uh, all have silver. So uh, this was a pretty impressive in endeavor, and it was a wonderful celebration. Uh, everybody was very proud of it. Um, uh, certainly, I thought it was important for us to acknowledge that, too. It's not just another, uh, you know, um, and I want to say, uh, you know, a, a, a token great job kind of thing. This was a, a lot of hard work by a lot of good people, and I think it just shows the commitment that these people have to, to, to long-term care for our veterans. On a personal note, my grandfather spent the last few months of his life there, uh, and I can't say enough positive things about him. I mean, it's just an amazing, amazing facility. So well-deserved, uh, very proud of it, and uh, they should be as well. Um, last thing for me, um, I would uh, echo the, the sentiment that people vote. 
Um, I would also kind of express my hope that you vote down ballot. <laughs> Don't just stop at the president. There's uh, a few other things going on in the state and the town that, uh, that need to be uh, addressed as well. So if you're taking the time to, uh, to vote, be it absentee or at the polls, please fill out all the ballots. <laughs> check, check all the boxes. Um, I know I would certainly appreciate that, and I'm sure several others behind this table would as well. Uh, and there's a lot of things to be dealt with on the, uh, the referendum questions. Whatever your position is, uh, this is our opportunity to weigh in. So please take the time either early um, or uh, uh, on voting on, on November 8th to vote, and uh, I will see many of you, I hope, out in front of the high school. Uh, yeah, very encouraging uh, on the voting front. Uh, I think we had more than 1,000 uh, uh, new registrations or over 16,000 registered voters. This is a, it's a large block. And the uh, early voting has been extraordinary. So uh, uh, I think we're, we're well on our way. Uh, November 19th is our next meeting. We have scheduled a workshop on the fireworks issue. Uh, please, if you want to have your voice heard, but you can't make the meeting, and we will provide plenty of opportunity for people to give us their insight into any issues surrounding our fireworks ordinance on that evening. That's a listening session, as well as a discussion amongst the seven of us. Uh, but uh, email us. It's easy to do. Our email is available, and we would love to be able to hear what people have to say about this, uh, about this issue. Uh, I'll finish up. Um, I attended the Boston post Kane presentation to Irene Kosky. Uh, it was at her daughter's house, uh, Diane Mills on uh, Spurwink. Her daughter, Karen Lothrop, was also there. It was really a great event. I mean, it, it, this is a cane that began the Boston Post newspaper in Boston, Massachusetts, began it in the early 1900s uh, to honor the oldest member of every community. Uh, the rules that have been set up in Scarborough over the years established that you need to be a resident for the previous 20 years. Uh, and that's why uh, uh, we have Irene at uh, uh, 97 years young, okay. uh, is now the honoree. Wow. And she, her smile lit up the room. It was a terrific uh, <laughs> event. Uh, uh, we all hung around afterwards, had coffee and uh, homemade muffins, and it, and it was terrific. The, and I can't thank the, uh, <coughs> Lions, the Lions Club enough for their sponsorship and support. Uh, uh, Daisy Higgins uh, of the Boston Post Cane Committee uh, uh, gave the uh, a cane, uh, as well as a plaque and pin. Uh, the Scarborough Lions Club uh, had uh, Pam Hartford, Gary Tapley, Bill Pape, and Jerry Butts all present, uh, along with husbands uh, of the uh, 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 Mills uh, daughters, uh, uh, Mill daughters. So it was a great event. And so uh, 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 congratulations to Irene Kosky. I'll accept the motion. Bill, I just wanted to point out, uh, you'd mentioned the next meeting, it's actually November 16th. 16th, thank just you. to be sure, 16th, and though we've not uh, established yes. the time for that listening session, my guess is it'll be around 6 p.m. We'll be preceding your, your regular meeting, which incidentally will be the last meeting this council sits. Quite a way for me to go out, huh? Yeah, that's work? right. <laughs> for the bang. Uh, uh, can we talk about samples? <laughs> uh, I, I did, there was a press release put out, and I was reading it earlier, and, and Irene went to uh, school uh, here in Scarborough, Scarborough High School, and she was the valedictorian of her class. Oh, cool. And the, I guess, the sole remaining member uh, still alive. So quite, quite a nice life. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I may, I'll ask for a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you.